And now we will have a lecture about a happy life. Happy life based on can we say, a change log of the added features to MariaDB 10, um, the releases since the last service, 10, 8, 9, 10. Um, that's up to Federico Razzoli, one of our favorite presenters here at the MariaDB server face to report on happiness and the backlog of new features. So over to you, Federico. Hi, everyone. As you said, my talk is about uh, recent uh, MariaDB features that were added in the recent versions. So uh, this is the usual slide about uh, who I am for uh, Whoever doesn't know who we are, Federico, and uh, I work for Veterans, and that is my email. I love emails, so if you do have any questions about anything I'm going to say or any comments, please feel free to reach me. So, why this talk, first of all? Well, uh, features. MariaDB has uh, great features. They implemented a lot of uh, wonderful features uh, recently. But uh, the features you don't know, surprise, surprise, will not help you in any way. Of course, I'm talking about proper features and not just uh, um, optimiz optimizations, because optimizations theoretically help everyone, even if you don't know about them. In reality, well, you should know about them anyway for various reasons, but still. But here I'm talking about those kind of features that you use uh, on purpose. Okay. Um, my point uh, in this slide is that even if MariaDB is great at creating new features, it's uh, sometimes a bit less great at advertising them in uh, letting people know with these features. Um, but you know what? Uh, complaining is cool. It's, it's, it's outstanding. I do it all the time because I'm Italian. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that is something better we can do sometimes, which is contributing. And actually, MariaDB has a wonderful knowledge base, which is a public wiki. The contents are covered by open licenses, uh, a Creative Commons license, and a GNU um, free documentation license. Um, and there are also pages in the, in the wiki itself about how to contribute. So it's something that everyone can do. And here I wanted to show an example. Actually, I made these changes exactly to show that anyone can do that. Yeah. Uh, these refer all to the same page, uh, which was the page about uh, um, the accepted syntax. Uh, I noticed that there were some things missing, and I made these uh, contributions. First of all, I noticed that it wasn't mentioned that you can um, uh, use uh, values instead of select um, on one side of the exact. I shown an example involving the sequence storage changing. Um, I, I fixed the example. <laughs> Uh, I added the offset fetch syntax, which was missing, but actually it can be used with accept. And uh, I completed the, the syntax of uh, order by. So, uh, my point is not that I'm great. My point is that this is not rocket science. Who, anyone can do it. And if you think you can't, it's just because you've never tried. Yeah, yeah. So, that said, um, many repeat versions. Okay, uh, I, I, I'm not going to talk about the prehistory. I'm not going to say that in the beginning, Maria DB used to follow the seven patterns that has my stuart, blah, blah, blah. No, let's talk about recent things. The latest um, Maria DB, um, the, the list of Maria DB long term support version is 10.6. 
uh, and it will be supported until July 2026. I think that sometimes MariaDB extends uh, um, the, the life of a version if people, if many people are still using it, but of course users shouldn't rely on this. Um, after 10.6, some short-term support versions were made. Um, three of them are stable, as you can see here. One is alpha, and uh, the, the latest one is a, an, uh, is a Redis candidate. Uh, as you can see, basically, sorry, as you can see, basically, um, the Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Redis candidate uh, stable pattern still exists, which is good because if, even if a, even if a version is a short term support, uh, you should know if it's stable or not. Um, but the big difference is, of course, uh, STS uh, versus LTS. Uh, theoretically, only uh, only long-term support should be used in production because the short-term support versions uh, have uh, support for only one year. Um, well, based on what is happening now, I can probably safely say that by that time another STS has been released. Um, but anyway, um, STS are, of course, mainly good for testing features, that is their purpose, give feedback, learn features when they come, and not having to learn them altogether when uh, a long-term uh, support uh, version is uh, released. Um, actually, if you want to test and give feedback, there are also specific binaries that MariaDB produces. Uh, I know is to test a single feature, but I'm not going to talk about that. Um, just uh, being aware that they exist, and uh, maybe one day, they, maybe one day you want uh, you want to try them. By the way, um, I said that theoretically STS versions shouldn't be used in production because actually. I think there are cases when uh, it can be more or less safe. More or less safe. For example, maybe you want to use only a specific feature, which maybe is useful for data analysis. So nothing prevents you to attach a new replica uh, to existing production servers uh, using an SDS and take advantage of uh, the new feature without creating any problems to the other servers. So, um, here in this talk, I'm going to uh, talk about the most important features included in these STSs. Um, so features that are not yet in a long-term support version, but uh, they will come, but you can expect op uh, to see them in, a, in the next long-term support version. Most important, according to me, of course. So you can, of course, disagree. Uh, I'm totally okay with the disagreement. Uh, when, when people who disagree discuss, uh, at least one of them uh, should learn something, probably both of them. Anyway, uh, I'm going to discuss the features not in a chronological order because I think it would be useless. I'm going to discuss them in a logical order, grouped by um, the, the, the macro areas that they belong to. And uh, I will not assume that everyone is an expert. Well, actually, the, the people that you can see uh, in, uh, in the image are actually experts. But uh, I will assume that anyone can watch uh, this talk. And, uh, I will explain it. So if you if you never used MariaDB or if you do it at a superficial level, maybe don't worry. I, I, I will try to explain things that are not obvious. So let's start with the features. Um, and let's start with the, uh, the replication area, replication and high availability. 
So, um, I selected three features in this area. Uh, as you can see, for each feature, I made this I mean, these tables, right? So you can see the first column, what the feature is. If you want to go deeper into understanding the feature, uh, you can see the ID of the JIRA task. Fortunately, MariaDB has uh, a public uh, JIRA account, so we can see what, uh, uh, what they work on. And looking at the tasks actually sometimes is very useful because sometimes you get more information than you can find in the documentation. Um, again, you can contribute in that case. Um, and you can get the context and uh, you, you can know the reasons why certain choices were made. And then of course I put uh, the version of the, of, of the feature. So um, let's start and uh, the first one is uh, what was called lag-free alter table. So, first of all, uh, previously alter table was executed on the master first. So in a replication chain, first the master did the whole operation and then it was started by each replica. Um, this means that while the replica do the alter tables, the master uh, is uh, probably writing to that table. And maybe the replicas can't because there is a metadata lock on that table, for example. So um, these kind of things tend to block uh, replication. And uh, what if a uh, if an alter table is very fast, maybe it doesn't matter, but sometimes it can take hours. So this lag free alter table basically uh, makes everything most, more uh, fluid because now the master starts to execute an alter table. It replicates, uh, it, I mean, it, it sends this event to the replicas saying it started to do an alter table. The replicas can also start, and then they will basically do it at the same time. Uh, actually, it could even be that replicas are faster than the master for uh, so many reasons. In that case, while well, the alter table will only be finalized when it's completed on the master. If alter table fails on the master, then the replicas will stop the operation. So basically this simple mechanic, well, this apparently simple mechanism um, guarantees that uh, there is consistency between uh, master and replicas. The next feature is about the allow list for uh, SST and SSI for Galera. Uh, as I said, I'm not assuming that uh, everyone who watches is an expert, so I'm going to even explain what Galera is. Galera is basically um, a virtually synchronous master-master um, uh, uh, replication for MariaDB. Well, MySQL users know it as a plugin probably, but uh, in MariaDB it's built-in. Uh, so basically you have it. And uh, um, the SST and SSI are important mechanisms of Galera because when a new node joins a cluster, uh, it, it is sent an SST, uh, which means um, a snapshot of the whole database, uh, of all databases actually, from another node. Um, when a node is restarted or the repeat crashes and then is restarted, uh, it will hopefully receive an IST, which is uh, an incremental snapshot, only the changes that it missed uh, during this interval of time. Uh, of course, mm, if it stayed down for too long, probably uh, the Galera cache is not big enough to contain all the changes and then it will receive a complete SSD. Anyway, um, 
that said, uh, the point is a node can receive uh, the data. So it is a good practice to keep Galera in a private network because otherwise maybe an even attacker will set up a, a new node and this node will connect to the cluster and will say, hi guys, I'm a new node and I would like to know anything. Uh, it, it is not ideal, but uh, usually running the Galera in a private network or virtual private network is enough. But anyway, there is this uh, nice feature that has been added. Oh, sorry. This uh, nice feature uh, has been added. Uh, it's uh, an allow list of IPs from which a new node can connect. So basically, uh, you have this variable, you put a list of uh, IPs here. Of course, if a node is new, you don't necessarily know its IP when you when you configure the servers for the first time. Um, in that case, you will have to add uh, uh, two addresses here for the new nodes, uh, and it requires a start. But you can do this one node at a time, so it's uh, it's not going to be a huge problem. Um, it accepts. IPs, both versions, four or six, uh, not just names. Um, and you can also query the uh, WSRF allow list table in the MySQL database uh, to see which, uh, which IPs are in the allow list. Um, of course, we're talking about IPs, so theoretically, this feature maybe is not super Kubernetes friendly, but on the other side, uh, I don't exactly know why people want to run databases on Kubernetes. So uh, maybe this is a good thing. Um, oh, and the other thing is uh, still about SST. Basically, the problem was debugging SST problems could be a bit hard because uh, uh, critic errors were printed in the error log. Uh, now we have this new file called the WSREP status JSON. Uh, the format is uh, readable for both uh, humans and uh, machines. And uh, this is an example copied from the documentation or maybe from a task, I don't remember. Anyway, you can see that it's JSON, but it's also well indented. So again, it's very readable. You have this status uh, object, um, which uh, can be checked periodically, for example, by an agent to check if there are problems uh, that is useful. And if there are problems, you will have this uh, array of errors and this array of warnings. So let's, uh, let's see features about performance. Um, these are the ones I selected. Basically, uh, inserts into empty tables are faster. There are uh, ascending and descending indexes, JSON histograms. Uh, collections, some collections are faster. Um, and the uh, inodb file size is now dynamic. Um, I can't see you anymore, so please let me know if, if there are any problems. In the meanwhile, I'm uh, still uh, talking. So let's start from uh, uh, the inserts. Um, inserts into empty tables were already made faster in 10.6. But in version 10.7, uh, more optimizations were made, uh, especially for tables that already had indexes. Um, well, it was actually a good practice to populate a table before creating indexes, uh, because this is faster. Um, 
But uh, if you can actually populate a table that already has indexes, well, you know that when you uh, end populating it, uh, you already have indexes, so it's uh, ready to use. Um, it can be convenient sometimes when you are uploading data into uh, a specific table into a into a server which is already used in production. Uh, mind you, uh, this works with empty tables, so you should use one insert, uh, uh, one multi-row insert, so uh, a single sta insert statement that inserts many rows. Because if you use many insert statements, basically after the first one, the table is not empty anymore, right? It, it, I, I, I don't know if it's intuitive or not, but it's worth highlighting. Uh, let's talk about indexes. Um, for, uh, well, basically, since since the beginning of time, more or less, MariaDB uh, supported. So, I think we actually have a co an immediate comment here by, by Marco on one of your items. Yes, uh, yes. regarding inserting into empty table. The initial implementation was like you said that uh, that only the first insert statement is uh, d done uh, in a special way but then there was a bug report that this case is the locking so we ma uh, made it depend on some uh, parameters uh, you have to do set unique checks equals zero and foreign key checks equals zero this is what the uh, mysql dump is using when it's generating the sql so currently you have to explicitly okay. enable this uh, optimization for inserting into empty table and then you can have multiple statements inserted into it inside this transaction. Okay, uh, thank you for the correction. Um, I, I, I didn't do a lot of testing here actually, so uh, thanks for letting me know and letting everyone know actually. Um, so, back to the indexes, basically MariaDB is supported for a very long time. Well, it always supported the ask and ask um, syntax when creating an index. Uh, you could do something like this, uh, alter table, blah, 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 add index, and then column list with ask and ask. But uh, until now, this syntax had no meaning. Uh, so indexes were always ascending. But now actually it works. So if you specify, um, I mean, if you write an SQL statement like this, you will have an index containing a date column, which is descending and then outer, which is ascending. So actually you can uh, mix uh, the two sort orders. And this, this is very important because this means you can uh, optimize uh, queries uh, like this. Uh, because uh, this query that you can hear, see here in, in the example will be able to use this index. Well, actually, even if you invert both the columns, it will be able to use an index. Uh, but it will not if, if you have uh, um, both um, descending columns in the index or both ascending columns in the index. So let's proceed. JSON histograms. Uh, well, uh, I said before that uh, I will try to explain everything so that uh, everyone can understand without being an expert. Um, this is actually a bit technical, but I will try. I will try to explain everything. Uh, basically, we, we need to explain uh, one concept first, which is statistics. Um, statistics are estimations about data distributions in the tables, in the indexes, and in the columns. Um, and that they are used uh, internally, of course, by the query optimizer. Uh, basically, it, Based on this information, the optimizer decides how to execute a query uh, in which 
in which order it will read the tables, which indexes it will use, or maybe it will decide not to use an index at all, and so on. Um, now, in previous uh, MariaDB versions, so uh, in time six or before, uh, MariaDB already implemented uh, engine independent statistics, which means that uh, statistics are uh, 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 written to system tables and uh, they can be used for uh, all tables, uh, any storage engine. Uh, I mean, storage engine dependent statistics still exist, but uh, um, we can also use uh, engine independent statistics. Uh, and this is also important because uh, probably some storage engines give uh, for information about uh, uh, data distributions or no information at all. Uh, probably this is especially true for special storage engines like Connect, um, for obvious, obvious reasons, uh, not because their quality is bad. Um, and then histograms. Uh, well, histograms are... Uh, uh, There's three more minutes until Q&A then, but... <laughs> well, uh, let me finish some some of the um, some of the features then, and uh, we will not reach half of the <laughs> we will not reach half the half of the plant talk. But uh, the slides will be available, I guess, so uh, people can still see them. Uh, Anyway, um, just to finish, basically, um, histograms are used to um, merge the values into groups of values or ranges of values. Um, and then there are more specific statistics like, okay, this range uh, has uh, X values and Epsilon uh, unique values, for example. Um, JSON histograms are more accurate and uh, more granular uh, histograms. Uh, they are not created by the phone. They are used by the phone if they exist. But to create them, you need to do it explicitly because it's a lot of information to check and to store. So you can use uh, this SQL query, which is analyzed table persistent for all, or the SQL query where you basically specify uh, the columns you want to analyze. Um, collations, well, this is actually an underestimated um, problem, I think. Um, collations, well, some who watches this talk knows what collections are. Uh, so let me explain very briefly. Uh, if character sets are basically uh, the set of characters that you can use in a column, uh, collations are um, the rules to uh, sort those characters, uh, for example, in an alphabetical order. Um, some collations are more simple, others are more complicated, some are case insensitive, some are not. Um, there have been some uh, optimizations in some collations, and uh, in my understanding, this is especially true for uh, collations that are a superset of ASCII. Uh, basically, uh, they now order characters uh, not one at a time, but uh, in groups. Um, if I have time, I'll just explain this, which is uh, basically InnoDB log file size is one of the two most important performance settings in MariaDB. If it's not big enough, your writes, the writes to your database will be slow. Um, but until now, changing it was risky and uh, not really recommended because it involved uh, making sure that MariaDB was uh, shut down properly uh, and then deleting the, the, uh, the log files uh, of InnoDB. Uh, basically, I wouldn't do it without a very good reason. Um, but um, 
Now, in ODP log file size became a dynamic variable, so you can change it at any time, even if MariaDB is running. Um, if I have only two minutes, instead of discussing the next features, I will only show the tables. Uh, just to say very briefly that uh, now we have uh, two nice uh, data types, which are UUID. Um, why is it important? Well, uh, because basically you can insert a, a UUID with the same syntax you used before, but instead of taking um, 64, character, uh, 64 bytes because it was a string, it will take four. Uh, and you have a init for um, type. Uh, init six already existed, but nowadays uh, IP4 is still more common. And then, very quickly, there are some new uh, functions. Uh, S-format can be used um, as a powerful but very friendly function to compose strings using uh, interpolation. Natural sort key is used to sort strings in a way that is uh, friendly for human beings and not for machines. Uh, this is very nice when you order on strings that are made of, uh, you know, uh, numbers, separators, and so on. Random bytes, which you can use to generate random bytes and then convert them to any uh, data type you want. Uh, JSON equals is basically um, very nice to compare to JSON documents because in MariaDB, JSON documents are actually strings and uh, when you compare strings, um, spacing and the order of keys count, for example, uh, with JSON except, sorry, with JSON equals, uh, these things are ignored. And then there were a couple of uh, enhancements to um, JSON path used in some functions. Um, basically, the array notation was extended with negative indexes and with uh, range uh, uh, syntax. And uh, since I already exceeded <laughs> the time that was allowed to me, uh, I'm stopping here. But uh, I, I hope to hear questions, of course. So thank you, Federico, and thanks for the very good uh, short summary of those of those tables. I think we got the gist of uh, JSON equals and UUID and all of that. So, ha uh, Vicenzi, is there any Bent up list of, of, of uh, questions here, or did we hurry up uh, Federico in vain? No, we're, we're just in time for next talk. We're just in time for next talk, but do we have questions? And in the audience? No. Uh, Federico, uh, thank you for mentioning uh, Alter. So that is, um, to my view, a very cool feature. And uh, actually in parallel uh, at all. So MySQL, uh, our competitor, doesn't have it. Uh, how do you see uh, it could affect, you know, uh, positively to us? Could you answer this? Uh, well, yes. Uh, you mean f f from, uh, from a user point of view, right? Right, right. Well, uh, I think it's very important because it solves a huge problem uh, because, uh, uh, well, Alter Table had two problems. Uh, one is that it's locking, so it's locking on the master itself. Well, it's not always locking. Nowadays, uh, most operations are not locking actually, but some are still locking. So, uh, of course, a user who runs it on a big table needs to be sure that um, they are not running a locking operation, or they must use a tool like Pity uh, Online Schema Chain. But I know that um, you guys are already working on a task that will solve this problem. Um, the other huge problem is more related to replication because uh, uh, Alter Table can make repli uh, replication lag a lot. Of course, not always, but in some cases it does. Um, when it happens, well, uh, sometimes 
people didn't expect it, and then they started to panic. Uh, so I, I, I really believe this is a killer feature. I, I don't know if this is an... Uh, if I'm answering your question, actually. I think you did, and that I think you gave a really good presentation on on how to be happy with the incremental set of features from from the last couple of re releases. So big thank you to you for doing the advertising that Maria DB we don't evidently do ourselves. Thank you. <laughs> I hope no one took offense about that. I I don't I, think I, we I did. Really want to uh, improve this. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.